If you follow this channel, or hopefully you're subscribed to this channel, you know that we talk a lot about leadership and you probably have a goal yourself to someday sit in the big chair, the CEO chair. But what is it actually like to be the CEO of a company? Well, today we're gonna to talk about that. I'm gonna talk about my experience as I've been a CEO now three times in three different types of companies. I'll explain to you what my experience was, what I learned along the way, and hopefully give you a glimpse inside of what a CEO deals with on a day-to-day -day basis and overall. My name is Tom and I'm the founder of Vertical Motion, where we help mid-career professionals become executives. If that sounds interesting to you, then you can click a link down below in the description that will take you to book a call with me where we can talk about your situation and if you might be a fit for a program that I use to help take people to the executive level. With that, let's get back to the conversation. In my career, I've been CEO three times. I first was CEO of a company back in 2010 where it was a startup. We had started with four employees. We grew it to about 35 employees and then ultimately that company grew to be about 60 employees or so so we've got to be a pretty good sized company it's still in business today the name of the company is cool fire solutions and at the time we were focusing on building mobile apps and hardware for the military applications the really cool technology it was at the beginning of the mobile app and smartphone era and we were building a lot of hardware that turned phones into different things a lot of things that we take for granted today came out of the technology that we were developing in that company Company. It was a really cool time. It was one of the most creative times in my career. I started the company mostly out of frustration because I wanted to build these things inside of a much larger corporation, but they just didn't have the interest or didn't really have the entrepreneurial spirit to build something like this. So I started the company. I was also wanting to be an executive and didn't feel like I had a path forward in the company I worked for. So I just created my own executive role. And boy, did I learn a lot in that first company. I learned a lot of lessons the hard way, quite honestly. My second CEO stint was yet another startup that we built called Candle. And in that company, we were building a carrier store that lets you change your SIM, your SIM card without physically changing the SIM card itself. This at the time was revolutionary technology in 2016, 2017 timeframe. We now have eSIM technology as a standard, but back then that didn't exist. And so if you wanted to change your SIM card, you had to physically pull the card out and put a new one in. We had a way where you could go into an app, choose the SIM that you wanted, and it would do it remotely for you without physically changing your SIM card. So it was really cool technology. It didn't work out for a lot of reasons, but during the time I took the company through a really cool accelerator program called Techstars and learned an awful lot about what it takes to actually build a company the right way. Finally, the third time that I've been CEO is for this company, Vertical Motion. It started out really just myself with some help from my wife. We now have eight employees. We have 20 people in the accelerator program as of November 1st, and we're growing like wildfire, and it's a lot of fun. In this particular company, I feel way more comfortable, confident, and relaxed in my abilities to lead this company into a multi-million dollar organization that changes the lives of thousands of people. I feel way more confident this time around than I did the first two times. I think the first thing that you're going to experience if you sit in the CEO chair is that it is daunting to sit in that chair first. For the first time when you sit down and you are the CEO and you look around and you realize that everybody's coming to you for the answer, that can take a minute to get used to. It was really helpful for me to have a great leadership team in my first startup. There were four of us who worked together very closely. I had a CTO, a CFO, and a VP of sales. And the four of us really got along really well, at least in the beginning anyway. But we got along really well and we communicated extremely well. And I didn't feel so lonely in other startups startups in the second startup, I felt very lonely. I had a CTO, but he and I weren't, weren't communicating well all the time. And so there were times where I just felt very isolated and very alone. And I've learned from a lot of CEOs that feeling of isolation and loneliness is pretty common in the CEO seat. It can feel like there's nobody to talk to because you may have thoughts in your mind about, well, this company might go to zero, or I might be running the company into the ground, or I might be doing the wrong thing. I might be missing a really great opportunity. All of these thoughts are constantly going through your mind as the CEO. And how can you talk to the people who work for you about that? That gets to be a little bit challenging. I find that the first two emotions that I felt pretty much every time that I've been the CEO, except maybe this last time, I felt like it was a daunting challenge and that it was a little bit lonely in the seat. Now, this is the third time I've sat in this chair. I don't feel nearly as uh, lonely as I did before because I understand how to build networks 
networks of mentors and masterminds and things like that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Something else that I always felt when I was the CEO and currently am the CEO was that it was a very challenging role. I felt like I was being challenged, whereas in previous roles or in lower level roles, I don't feel as challenged. And sometimes I can get really bored with the job. If I work in a role that's kind of like, well, I got to do this one thing really well, but I don't get to work with the entirety of the company and try this out and try that out and think about this and think if I only have to think about one thing, I get kind of bored and I get frustrated that I don't have more autonomy and flexibility. When I'm in the CEO role, even though it's challenging, it, it's the right kind of challenge. It's the feeling that I am given a whole bunch of work that I can do. And so it's difficult to kind of push yourself back down into a smaller role where you're only doing thinking about certain things. Like for example, I went back into a sales role after being CEO and it was really uncomfortable to just only focus on sales and not operations and all of the other functions of the company as a CEO would normally do. I found that it was challenging, but in a good way. I also found that being CEO usually was a lot of fun. And especially in the company that I'm in right now, which is very profitable, very low overhead. Everybody is great to work with. We have eight people in a company and they're all wonderful people that I love hanging out with and spending time with and working with in this environment. I just love the entire team that we've built. And so that makes this job a lot more fun than maybe a job where I'm just grinding away inside of a machine, making someone else's dream come true. As the CEO, you get to set the fun. You get to set the culture of the company. And I've really focused on making sure that the culture of this company is a fun culture, that we do have fun. We take time to go and do exciting and fun things and we enjoy each other's company. You can have fun as the CEO if you want to. It's important that you know that you lean into who you are when you're an executive. That means that if you're a gregarious, outgoing person, be a gregarious, outgoing CEO. You can have someone that's more of a hard ass on your staff to help you do the things that are harder for you to do, but lean into who you are so that people see you as an authentic leader, right? And so I'm authentically fun. I enjoy having fun. And this has been a really great experience for me. And so I really leaned into that in this third company now. The other thing about being a CEO is that you grow into the role. It takes time to grow into the role of CEO. You are the leader that everyone is looking to, and it takes time to get comfortable with that. Just like doing YouTube, it takes time for me to learn how to be comfortable staring at a camera lens talking to you. But it also takes time to sit in this chair with all of the lights on you and all the people looking to you for the answers when things are not going well or not going right. They look to you. You have to learn how to become comfortable with that responsibility. And it quite honestly, it just takes time. Experience is the best teacher when it comes to being an executive. If you've experienced a lot of difficulty, well, when you're in a good situation, you'll be very comfortable and confident. And even if the situation gets worse, but it doesn't get as bad as it was in a previous experience, then you'll be more comfortable and confident handling that, navigating that challenge. And your team will see that in you. So it just takes time to get comfortable being CEO. You learn the skills that you need on the job. And quite honestly, there really is no training for a role like this. You just have to sit in a chair to understand what that feeling is of having that responsibility and then ultimately learning how to live with that responsibility over time. Some people are not cut out to be CEO. A lot of people may think that they're not and they actually are. And so trying to figure out who you are, whether you're really cut out for the role or not, can be a little bit difficult. I think one of the things that you can do to figure out if CEO is a role that you really can aspire to is to watch your CEO in the company or organization in which you work now and look at the decisions that they make. See if you can actually even have a conversation with this person. At some companies you can, you know, talk to the CEO and just ask them, what is it like to make the decisions that you make? How do you handle the stress and pressure? And just kind of watch them and learn from them. And that will give you some insight into what it would be like for you. If you can put yourself in their chair and see the world from their perspective, you can see whether that feels exciting or anxiety producing. If you're super anxious, you might not be suited for the role, but if you're super anxious and excited, maybe you are. If the CEO chair is the right chair for you and that's the path that you wanna take in your career, well, how are you gonna get there? What is your path to the CEO chair? This is a 
question you're gonna be asking yourself as you take a step back and think about where you are in your career today and where it is that you want to go long-term. I decided early on in my career that I wanted to be a CEO. I decided in 2000 that I was going to be CEO someday. And in 2010, I made that happen for me. And it was a train wreck, quite honestly. I didn't have the right skills and experiences to be an effective CEO, but I got through it. And by the end of my time in that role, I was okay. I was doing pretty well. The second company I did much better. And now this third company I'm doing far better and feel very comfortable now. It just takes time. But what is your path? It took me 13 years to get to a point where I'm actually a pretty good CEO. How long will it take you to become a good CEO? Will it take you 13 years of trial and error in experience? Or is there a faster way to learn what you need to know so that you can learn from other people's mistakes? Read my mistakes. This is what I offer in my coaching program. I help people become executives. I do have a couple clients who are interviewing for or have created a role for themselves as CEO. And so I help them learn what it's like to sit in that chair and how to handle that sense of responsibility in the program. One last thing I'll say about being CEO, you have to be decisive. You have to be willing to make hard decisions, even if you don't have enough information to make decisions. You have to make hard decisions quickly. This is one of the most important skills. In fact, I'm gonna create another video right after this one that talks specifically about the most important traits that a CEO can have. But just know that if you do make it to the C-suite and you become the CEO someday, know that you're expected to make really difficult decisions without enough information to make them all the time. That's a big part of the anxiety of sitting in that chair. If you're interested in learning more about how you can take the next step in your career to the executive level, and then from there, maybe someday to the C-suite or even CEO, let me know. We can connect by booking a call with me. There's a link down in the description of this video where you can do that. And let me know in the comments if you have been a CEO, if you are a CEO, or if you have questions about what it's like to be a CEO. Glad to answer those questions down in the comments as well. That's what I have for you today. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next one.